peace be upon you, my brothers and sisters, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Today is Sunday, June 20th. It is Father's Day, and we extend a warm, happy Father's Day greeting to all of our dads and our father figures who are out there. I am Pastor Todd. We are here at Saudi United Methodist Church, and I thank you for joining me for today's sermon, Three Loves Every Father Needs to Have. We have three scripture readings that we are going to look at this morning. So let's go ahead and locate the first one. It is in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. Since we started off Mother's Day with some funnies, I thought it would be appropriate to give Dad an equal amount of time. And one of the best ways to do that is with some dad jokes. If you're not familiar with dad jokes, they are puns that are so bad that you can't help but laugh or groan. A more analytical definition is a short joke typically a pun, presented as a one-liner or a question and answer. Dad jokes are told by fathers either with sincere humorous intent or to intentionally provoke a negative reaction to its overly simplistic humor. Dad jokes have become such a phenomenon that they have actually spawned videos where two people go head-to-head spouting off their best dad jokes, hoping to make the other person laugh. So here are a few dad jokes to get us going. What do you call a hippie's wife? Mrs. Hippie. What sound does a witch's car make? Broom, broom. What did the drummer call his twin daughters? Anna one, Anna two. Did you hear about the restaurant on the moon? Great food, no atmosphere. How is a baby bird like its dad? It's a chirp off the old block. Do you think glass coffins will be successful remains to be seen. What do a tick and the Eiffel Tower have in common? They're both Paris sites. What do you call a dad who falls through the ice? A pop sickle. Why do seagulls fly over the ocean? Because if they flew over the bay, we would have to call them bagels. One day Joe said to John, what does your father do for a living? He's a magician, John replies. He performs tricks like sawing people in half. That's cool. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Joe asked. John nodded. Oh yeah, got four half sisters and a half brother. Dads also seem to have a special vocabulary. Everyone's father probably has a saying or two that he is known for using all the time. Some common ones that all dads probably have used at one time or another include, guess it's free then, when the cashier has trouble scanning an item. What's the damage before looking at the bill? Yelling at the neighbor who's washing his car. Hey, can you do mine next? And asking his co-workers, are you working hard or hardly working? Whether it's a favorite phrase or a groan-inducing joke, our fathers are known for a lot of things. Their work ethic, their discipline, their tenderness, their toughness, their sensitivity, and their presence. This morning, as we celebrate fathers, we are going to look at three loves 
that every father needs to have in order to be a good father. And we're going to find that they are also loves that every good father needs to receive. The first kind of love that every father needs to have is patient love. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Being a dad requires a lot of patience, just like being a mom requires a lot of patience. Parents experience plenty of ups and downs as they raise their children. And sometimes it's all you can do to not lose your patience. It's especially true when your children are very, very young and they can't communicate what they want or they need. But we know it doesn't stop there, does it? We can lose patience when they become tweens and teenagers and think that they know everything. We can lose patience when we're helping them with a math problem or we're teaching them how to drive or we're trying to navigate the befuddling world of how they date these days. Amen? During these kind of times, we can sympathize with how God felt in Psalm 78, verse 41. Again and again, they tested God's patience and provoked the Holy One of Israel. Amen. The Apostle Paul reminds Christians that we are to be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults. The great 14th century theologian and saint Thomas Akempis phrased it this way, try to be patient in bearing with the defects and infirmities of others, whatever they may be. Remember that you also have many failings which others must bear. If you cannot make yourself what you would like to be, how can you expect to have anyone else exactly as you would like them? More than 10 times in his letters, Paul referred to patience as a key virtue for the followers of Christ. Gentlemen, one thing that we can actively do each day to be a better father and a better husband and a better Christian is to practice our patience. Lord knows I'd need to. Our children need to be able to model godly patience and they can only learn that if they see it in us in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 24 Paul wrote a servant of the Lord must not quarrel but must be kind to everyone be able to teach and be patient with difficult people one night a man and his wife were asleep in bed when someone knocked on their front door. The man awoke and he looked at the clock and saw that it was three in the morning. And he thought, you know what, I am not getting up out of my warm bed at such an hour. So he rolled over and tried to go back to sleep. The knocking on the front door grew more persistent. Aren't you going to answer that? The man's wife asked him. So the man dragged himself out of bed and went downstairs and he opened the front door. On the porch was a disheveled looking man whom the homeowner knew immediately was dead drunk. Hi there, the stranger slurred. Can you give me a push? No, get lost, the homeowner snapped. I'm sleeping. Do you have any idea what time it is? And he slammed the door and he went back upstairs and he told his wife what had happened. Dave, that wasn't very Christian of you, his wife said. Do you remember that night that we broke down in the pouring rain and you had to go to a nearby house and get help? What would have happened 
if they had told us to get lost. A man sat down on the side of the bed and he said, but honey, this guy is, is drunk as a skunk. It doesn't matter, his wife said. He needs our help and it's the Christian thing to do. So sighing miserably, the man got dressed, went back downstairs and opened the front door. But the stranger was gone. He shouted, Hey, you out there, do you still need a push? And he heard a voice come back from the darkness that says, Yeah, I do. Fine, the owner replied. Where are you? And the drunk said back, I'm over here on the swing. Something tells me that that homeowner just ran out of what little bit of patience he had left. Dads, we need to be able to show patient love. Now let's turn over to our next scripture reading, Luke chapter 15, verses 22 through 24. Luke 15, 22 through 24. The second kind of love that every father needs to have is forgiving love. Luke 15, beginning in verse 22. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and, and sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. The father in the parable of the prodigal son is an amazing example of forgiving love. Instead of criticizing and condemning his wayward son, which he surely could have done considering the mess that his son had gotten himself into, this father extended forgiveness. He went out of the way to make sure that his son knew that he was loved and that he was welcome and that he was forgiven. Martin Luther King Jr. said that forgiveness is not an occasional act. Rather, it is a constant attitude. Now, in contrast, the older son wasn't nearly as accommodating about his younger brother. The older brother was angry. All these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. Dads, we have to be able to forgive our children because they will say things and they will do things that land them in trouble. But forgiving does not mean a lack of consequences. A wise father knows how to forgive, and he also knows how to hold his children accountable for the consequences of their actions. You and I experience the same thing from God. He forgives us fully and completely. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 says, I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. But what we have said or what we have done may still have consequences that have to be dealt with. Dads, we need to be able to show forgiving love. Our third and our final scripture verse is one that is so familiar you don't even need to look it up. It's John 3.16. The third kind of love that every father needs to have is sacrificial love. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, 
but have eternal life. Being sacrificial means being, able, means being ready to give up and to go without and to do without. It means willful, intentional surrender. And a father's greatest example of this is God himself. For the sake of our salvation and for the redemption of all creation, God sent Jesus into our world knowing that when the time of atonement came, he would be separated from his son. And of course, there's the sacrifice of Jesus himself. He endured humiliation, abuse, torture, and a gruesome death in order to redeem us from our sins and make us right with God. Dads need to have sacrificial love, and the best dads do. They give up, and they do without, so that their children can have better opportunities. I think about my own dad. He took on a second job when I was in middle school and high school. Every evening, from Monday through Friday, he cleaned one of the local banks in my hometown. The money that he made from that, he put into a special savings account for my college tuition. It was an act of sacrificial love that my dad did not have to do, but he did it anyway in order to give me the best chance to succeed. And while I was in college and my friends were doing work-study programs on campus or they were getting a part-time job off campus. I did not have to do that because of my dad's sacrificial love. Another great example of sacrificial love is Job. We often forget that Job was a really great dad because most of the time we focus on his suffering. But listen to this from the first chapter of Job. There was once a man named Job. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God and stayed away from evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. Job's sons would take turns preparing feasts in their homes. And they would also invite their three sisters to celebrate with them. When these celebrations ended, sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children. He would get up early in the morning and offer a burnt offering for each of them. For Job said to himself, Perhaps my children have sinned and have cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular practice. Job faithfully lifted up his children before the Lord. He offered sacrifices to God just in case his children had sinned. And he did not do it just one time, but this was his regular routine. Dads, we need to be able to show that kind of sacrificial love. Now I said at the top that we would look at three loves that every father needs to have in order to be a good father. And they are also loves that every good father needs to receive. Children, our dads need to get patient love from us. They need to get forgiving love from us. They need to get sacrificial love from us. Dads are not perfect, although when we are very small, they seem that way to us. But as we get older, we realize and we learn that they are human too, and they make mistakes. They stumble, and they slip, and they fall. They sometimes say or do the wrong things. But if we want godly fathers, we need to be able to show them 
patience and forgiveness. We need to find ways to sacrifice on their behalf. Maybe you need to be a little more patient with your dad. This is especially true for those of us who have aging parents. Just as dad has shown patient love to us, we may have to work a little harder at showing patient love to him in his senior years. Maybe you need to be a bit more forgiving of your dad. Perhaps you still carry pain or scars or wounds, maybe feelings of abandonment or rejection from your dad. Nobody asks you or expects you to forget about those things. But you can take steps to forgive because in doing that, you are freeing yourself. Maybe you need to be able to express sacrificial love more often. You may want to look around and see what you can do that will benefit or bless your dad. What can you go without or do without so that your dad can experience that kind of love? As we celebrate Father's Day today, we do give thanks to God for our dads and for all of the lessons that they have taught us, for all of the ways that they have provided for us, and for how they have helped us to see and to know the patience and the forgiveness and the sacrifice of our Heavenly Father. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for all the fathers and father figures in this world and for the many ways you use them to lovingly guide others to your heart. We ask your blessings on them. May they see you and know you in new ways. Show them how much you love them and care about them. You entrusted your son, Jesus, the child of Mary, to the care of Joseph, an earthly father. Bless all fathers as they care for their families. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and patience. Support them in the work they have to do, protecting those who look to them, even as we look to you for love and salvation. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our rock and our defender. Amen. I pray that you will have a terrific Father's Day. Uh, you may be taking Dad out for a meal or uh, taking the grandkids to visit or something like that. Maybe just taking Dad out for a drive or a hike somewhere. Whatever you do, have a great time. Be safe. Enjoy your time together. May God bless you and keep you until we see each other again. Amen.